we we kind of like are stuck in our ways and sometimes we're like why can't I find my blessing why can't I get married or it's like but what have you done for God to serve him for him to be like cool oh, this is for you wow. a smooth sea or something like that so it basically wait we're in by the way oh we're in <laughs> yeah we are yes. hello <laughs> hey guys hello so we have Layla in the building, aka she's a PT for the celebrities yeah. and the peasants. And I asked, I asked, I inquired for us regular peasants. Um, she can work out with you. Um, so before we dive in, mm -hmm. just a, a bit of a background. So you and I met, yeah, by God's fate. Yeah, I swear to God, nothing yeah. by accident. Nothing, nothing yeah. is a coincidence. Everything is purposeful. But we met. Um, would you want to tell the story? Uh, I can tell the story, yeah. So Go. we met, we were both invited onto radio. Yeah. BBC London Radio um, by Clara. And shout out to Clara. Yeah, we, went, we went on that day. We met in the room and we were waiting to go on. Yeah, so basically we were both invited onto radio. It was Emerging Talents and we both had our own little pieces that day. We had a little network before we went on. Yeah. And yeah, that was us, yeah. Little did we know we'd be here today. I know, yeah. We've got, we've got a little sisterhood, a, a developing yeah, sisterhood. Yeah, a developing sisterhood. And the thing is, I don't take these things lightly. Like, I genuinely believe when people cross paths, like, pay attention to why. Yeah. Sometimes it's a lesson, like, take note of this person's character or, like, yeah, not for me. But there's something that you take away. And sometimes it's just a pure blessing. Like, mm. you were meant to see each other at a certain time and then that's where the connection happens and we become purposeful for each other yeah. as opposed to, like, yeah. Like, the other day my friend said to me, um, it's a shame me and you didn't hang out as kids mm. and I went and that's God's timing that's my instant reply rather than Everything. be like oh yeah, yeah 100% right. it's just like, 100% well, yeah when I met you I knew it was very cool and then obviously you told me about your pod and I looked into it and I, like I told you before we started I definitely prayed that we'd be here today I knew we'd do something together and it's happened really authentically like yes. from me DMing you that day asking you a question and you're like do you know what come on the pod let's talk about it there so it's a really beautiful conversation that we're having as well. So, yeah, like you said, everything is God, like, brings us together to have this conversation, so. I'm happy. It's exciting. So, as you know, I start mm -hmm. every conversation um, with asking you your favourite quote. Mm -hmm. So, I know it's, it might be a bit of a tricky one to explain, but please go for it. Yeah, so, let me see if I can say it properly. So, a quote that I, I think my... My mum used to have this like in her house, in in her house um, growing up, and it was something along the lines of a skilled sailor never swam a smooth sea. Okay. So it's like, it's something like that. I think I probably got the wording of it wrong, but you know, with when bad things happen, we become greater. And I've definitely experienced my share, fair share of not great things, but it's only developed my character, made me better. So. I'm now a skilled sailor. <laughs> no, that's good. I think that's a beautiful way of looking at it because some people are like, oh, why are these things happening to me? Yeah. And they can maybe be feeling disgruntled about it. So yeah. they're just like, okay, so I'm going through all this, 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 when am I going to catch a break? But it's only when you realise actually all these experiences are shaping you. 100%. But this. Yeah, but then it's like timing as well. The timing that you are like with your healing. Mm the perspective or frame of mind you have in that moment will be I guess how you're internalizing it so now I'm at a different part of like my healing or whatever you want to call it where I'm not in that victim mode but I have been in the victim mode I feel like you've got to go through I it think so you then have be to like be, yeah. okay you're allowed to, the thing is you're allowed to feel like a victim but as long as it doesn't become your identity as long as it yeah. doesn't like ambush you yeah, yeah, yeah. where you're like okay I've not really fulfilled I've not lived to my potential because I've been too busy in this energy mm. that it's consumed me and actually just made me better and so yeah I think it's okay to be in your feelings but it's just finding the balance yeah the balance. <laughs> balance. so basically um you message me firstly you feel like you're like let's work out together I'm like yeah yeah cool. yeah but then she's like in southeast London I'm like oh, okay cool yeah. <laughs> maybe one day we can face up no we will do it inshallah yeah um but then you asked me another question and when you messaged me I was like oh crap she's probably going hello we haven't set a date and I'm like oh gosh and then I heard your message oh yeah and then I was just like do you know what sis let's just hold tight and have this conversation face to face yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to delay your situation yeah yeah, yeah. but I was just like because there's so many women um 
who are kind of going through this, especially as Muslim women, um, where basically you said to me you have this urge yeah. and want to wear hijab. Yeah. And that's that's incredible because obviously, like, what with what you do as a career, mm. um, someone will be like, really? And it's just like, same with me. When I put it on, people are like, mm, didn't see it coming. But then they saw it coming because they know who I am as a person. Okay. As far mm. as, like, um, the way I carry myself yeah. and the way I choose to live, they're like, we kind of see that could be a potential next stage for you, but we weren't ready for it. Mm. And I'm just like, nor was I, but you know, we moved. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to have this conversation because I feel like it will resonate with a lot of people who mm. are kind of conflicted. Like a lot of us, you know, part of growing up British that were, were raised here, were born here, some of us, and but we're from a different place and we have different culture values and different faith. And then we have a narrative that we're, kind of embedded in which is our society and the social narrative and that's very conflicting at times and it's just like you want to fit into all of it but then also navigate as a human being um so then when you reach that point of I want to get closer to God or I want to do something that's a bit more spiritual you're then hit with that wall of okay but this is going to be completely different than how people perceive me and that's like to an extent that's a big deal yeah okay so we'll start from the beginning um growing up what did um faith look like at home to you so i was born muslim Mm. i was born muslim my mother is turkish cypriot so she was born raised in cyprus um wasn't brought up by my dad so just by my mum. my mum was very strict on we are turkish (laughs) so i felt very turkish growing up for you very patriotic Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. I was always that girl in school, like, hey, I'm the Turkish one. Um, but yeah, so I grew up very Turkish, I would say. Mm. My mum said, we're born Muslims, you're Muslim. And that was as far as the kind of conversation went, to be honest. We didn't have any, like, mum never took me mosque, never taught me how to pray. I was sent to Turkish school. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, Saturday Turkish school. And a lot of my Muslim friends now, obviously, they, they went to Islamic school or, like, Quran school. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. So and and it's interesting like as well I want to talk about I guess the difference of growing up islamically and it being like embedded into you like that but yeah my culture was embedded into me not islam but then grow up now and I obviously heard on some of the pods you did as well now I can look back with my perspective and see all the parts of islam that was in my upbringing mm-hmm. and it's so beautiful to now see that and recognize that's where it's from that's good um you know like the discipline the cleanliness the being a good person the morals those are the things my mum like really put into me mm-hmm. and then looking back oh, I'm like, oh okay no that was that was islam um yeah, yeah but i think things were just diluted um depending on the family you're born into and the culture i guess that's going to influence how much you have islam or maybe yeah. not and i just didn't i just didn't have it growing up um it, my mum was very strong on us being turkish us being good people, manners, faith wasn't a discussion. I think that's pretty common in lots of people's homes. Or they mention, like, we're Muslim or we're, like, Christian, whatever your faith is. Yeah. Um, but then they have their own mix and blend of it. Yeah. So, like, growing up, there's certain things that I thought were Islamic that weren't Islamic. They're actually yeah. very cultural-based. Yeah. Yeah. And vice versa, where I feel yeah. like this is part of right. our faith. They're like, no, this is culture. But they don't know because it's, like, generational inherited yeah. information. So, yeah. like, they... I guess our old, the older generation, um, above me at least, um, they've just been, they've just inherited things about question, about consideration. It's just, you know, this is what we do. Yeah. You know, like I'm from Egypt and Sudan. Oh, as, as Egyptians, this is what we do. And it's like, okay, but how much of that is really faith related? And it's only when you become an adult that yeah. you start reflecting 100%. and taking it in. And even like, like I started putting up my mum going, you know, mum, like technically that's not Islamic. And she's like, yeah. this is what we do. Yeah. This is what we do. Yeah. Traditional. Like having to not wanting to even like um, celebrate certain things that are conflicting with the faith. Mm. She'd be like, it's fine though, Herbert. It's very harmless. I'm like, mum, don't make me have to bring out a hadith. I know, you. I bad. know. This is and I tell my mum, and I'm like, mum, like, why? I wish, I really wish I was brought up Islamically and, you know, you sent me to Quran school and all of that. Um, and I'm like, mum, why didn't you? And she was just like, you know, I just wanted... I didn't want to be too forceful with it. I just mm. wanted you to kind of find it yourself. And I, I think, guess I, I guess that's, that's her thing. like harmless perspective and awareness of it. But obviously with my kids, I, I don't want to do that. And I do want to teach them about Islam, you know. And I do think as a parent, you have a duty to do that. And I think my mum just, you know, 
she didn't have it. She didn't have that yeah, yeah. Harsh, harsh religious upbringing. Um, but then I think also to an extent, there is some wisdom in what your mum's saying. Yeah. Because some people who went to madrasa who were taught these things, they actually went against it. Yeah. Because they because of the, the fear that their parents put on, like, yeah. you have to, you have to, you have to, they start rebelling against it. Yeah. It's just like it's long, like this whole thing. Whereas when you're learning it as an adult and you're willing to be open to learn it, you're taking it in like a, like a newborn baby. I get you know what, what I you're mean? saying. So it's, yeah. it's a very slippery slope, but it's yeah, also a slippery, it's a slippery slope slippery on both slope. ends. It's a slippery, yeah. Because I know people who are like really religious growing up or their parents like push them to certain things and now they're just very nonchalant. If anything, they don't really have much faith because they... It hasn't come from... Yeah. Sorry to cut you, yeah. And not just that, but they also feel like... Um, like they have it, they have trauma from their childhood. And they've attached it to faith. Yeah. So they'll say, oh, 100%. dad used to beat me for not praying, for 100%. example. And it's just yeah. like, you're not forgetting. That's a, that's a problem. That, that's something with your dad. Something yeah. to do with your faith. And exactly. It's like, so I've had, I have Muslim people now who go, oh, or like even Christians are like, yeah, I don't really mess with it because mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but that's your childhood. That's nothing to do yeah. with your faith. Do you know, off the back of that, one of my Muslim friends, because um, I ask him questions all the time, but he was like to me, in Quran school, like, they were really bad with discipline. So, like, mm -hmm. they'd actually beat you. The yeah, teachers yeah, would yeah. beat you. So he then created, you know, Quran school is a bad place where these bad things happen to me, but he's not understanding that it's actually a beautiful place. But because of his experience and his age, and again, like, the culture that was drawn into it, mm. he didn't want to do these things. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? And it created, like, what you said... Um, it kind of pushed him away from it because of the feelings it was like. There's so yeah, many people in that him. situation. And I feel, I feel very grateful because I could have been that person as well. Mm -hmm. But because I've always been very curious and like, mm -hmm. I want to be very purposeful. Yeah. I started understanding more and more what purpose is and what I represent. So rather than like growing up, people were like, oh yeah, you don't drink. Oh, why? Rather than saying it's haram, I'd be like, it's haram because blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I'm schooling you to why certain yeah. things are forbidden. And I'm and I'm also educating myself, yeah, so I'm doing nice. things with knowledge rather than oh another restriction, another obstacle, yeah. rather than actually God's protecting my energy, so I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. when you see the beauty of it, you're just like, yeah, I mess with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm down. But yeah, growing up for me, like I had a bit of both. Um, but it was very very conflicted, and you still have to like unpick a lot of things and go, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with this, mm -hmm. and then like focus on what is more important, which. To everyone, it should be really like your purpose of faith. Um, so, uh, did you ever think you'd wear hijab in your life? Uh, honestly, no. If you asked the Layla back then, yeah. no. Like it wasn't in my, it wasn't even in my mind. Like I wouldn't. I think there was also a point in time throughout my upbringing. Like I, I, I started to learn about Islam when I was about. 23 24 obviously I'm 25 yeah, now so it's not yeah. even been a long time yeah. I've been learning and practicing Islam but I didn't even fully identify as a Muslim growing up some points because I was so like I just didn't know and it was similar to you like with what you were saying growing up I felt very Turkish but then in my family I was also the only white one because mm. my dad's half English all my family are just Turks yeah, yeah, I've never yeah. been brought up here with my dad's side of the family so I've just been around my mom's side just completely Turks so obviously I'm the only like white one you know, with but a have, little bit have, of English. Have you, were you made to feel, or was it like very evident that you felt out of place? Or um, was it more of an emphasis that you felt within yourself? I don't think I was made to feel like that because my dad was English. Mm. But it was definitely like, you know, everyone knew, my aunties and uncles knew, like my dad, you know, was in prison or my dad wasn't around and, and mm. stuff like that. So I wasn't made to feel like that. But a little bit because I was a female, I guess I felt a bit different from my cousins who were, who uh yeah who are um males so um, yeah so basically hijab wasn't, wasn't a thing oh yeah no yeah so you're so what so the 22 year old self you were like okay like this is interesting let me look into it 23 24 you're really looking into it what was that turning point where you go do you know what i want to look into faith like what happened for you to what happened to gravitate? which is a funny story is i had a egyptian boyfriend people are brought into your life for different reasons yeah so we're gonna spin that. Yeah, the 100%. reason that he was brought to me was for me to find Islam. Alhamdulillah. And Islam. when I met him, there was something about him. He was like very grounded, and there was just something about him that kind of drew me to him. And then he never pushed Islam onto me, but through he used to talk about it, and and I don't know, 
again, you can see on my face, like, it's just a nice warming feeling. I don't really know how to put it into words. But through him, I became curious. And I didn't even become openly curious when we was together. I wanted it to be my thing. Do you know? Um, so I just became curious, was learning about Islam. Um, and just, yeah, was doing my own research. Then went back to my mom, my grandparents, asked a lot of questions about why, yeah. you know. And then I... Yeah, I was like learning how to pray. Obviously, this year was the first time I fasted during Ramadan, which was, yeah, well done. which was a lovely experience as well. And then my friend at the time, one of, one of, my, no, one of my clients I trained, I told, she was telling me how she feels about the gym, basically. Mm. You know, when people feel about the gym, they don't feel like it's their home. They're not confident. They feel quite scared, yeah, intimidated. Yeah. I was like, that's exactly how I feel about the mosque, yeah, about the masjid, because yeah. I've, I've never been before. And I was like, do I belong there? A little bit more about like me being white as well. My English side, I was like, you know, do I belong there? I don't know. God, that's hella reverse. Feel good. <laughs> and then when I went, she, then she took me the next day. Yeah. Oh my god, I saw every different type of woman yeah. from the world, yeah, and I was yeah. like, I belong here. Yeah. And now I go every Friday. I go prayers. I go by myself. Obviously, I run my free session there now, which we'll yeah, get into my amazing. lady session there for the women, and I feel, yeah, very at home. And then obviously, first time I wore a hijab praying go into the masjid and then I just developed a relationship and then even the first time I put it on I just looked in the mirror and again I can't describe the feeling and the more I wear it now the more I look in the mirror and I'm just looking at myself like wow something inside of me yeah. is telling me this is what I should be doing Subhanallah. and inshallah one day it, like that's exactly what I will be doing yeah, yeah but yeah every time I wear it there's something inside of me that is like you know or every time I'll keep it on, I keep see it on. a sister wearing a hijab I'm like wow like even today when I came in and then when you was getting ready and you yeah, put your yeah, job yeah. I was like wow like yeah it's beautiful Ashallah, so oh see whereas I'm like oh I promise I've got nice hair on the no. like whereas it's just like you're seeing the opposite you're seeing like yeah, I'm, I'm liking like, this wow, one yeah, 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 oh, yeah. transformation hey. <laughs> um so growing up for me my mum wore hijab but what I knew about hijab for me is I wanted to wear it one day so I always knew I wanted to wear it okay um and disclaimer for everyone starts going the troll police and like you're not really wearing hijab We'll talk about this one. But um, they, they'll say it's not because technically, like, this is showing and like, mm -hmm. it's your legs. But, and that's the thing. Sorry to cut you, but modesty is going to look different on every different, on every Muslim woman. You've spoken about we it We will before. definitely talk about it. Yeah. Don't worry. But yeah, um, I definitely wanted to wear hijab, but I always, my mum put it on when she was 45. So to me, I was like, okay, so culturally, I guess, in my head, I'm like, when I get married again, okay. I settle down, like, it'll be like the final thing mm -hmm. I do, mm -hmm. right? So I've kind of put the hijab on a pedestal of like, you should only wear it when you've done X, Y, and yeah. Z, and then you put on the hijab as like the final chapter of your life. Um, so I never was against it, but I just wasn't quite ready. And there was like a okay. resistance inside me. Um but so whenever I meet people, especially when I was coming to like find potential partners, they'll be like, oh, you're not covering, you're not covering, I can't marry someone who's not covering. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're a great person, but you're not covering. And, I'm, and then the more I had that and the way they did it was like in a very negative way, like I wasn't good enough, mm -hmm. um, the more I resisted wearing it, the more like right. even though I wanted to wear it, it's just like, because you're making me feel invalid. Yeah. You're make and the way you're doing it in such a negative way, like some some of them are excessively negative. Right. That I'm just like you're actually putting me off it. You're making right. me feel like I'm not worthy of a human being until I cover. Right. And it's just like, but then everyone's got a journey, and I think that's what people forget is like we have to accept that every pro everyone has a different process and different journey than you. And the same way that guy can turn around and say to me, "Well, you're not wearing hijab," but then you're also short of something as well. Like, as a man, like, it's so easy to cover yeah. your sins. It's so easy to cover. Like, you might still be, like, drinking, but, you're, but your salah's on point or you're mm. doing everything else, but you're not really praying. But because hijab is so physical, it's so easy for you to just fire shots at me rather than go, do you know what? Who is she as a character? Who is she as a person? What is her purpose? Um, yeah. Her manners? All these things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, actually, I had a very conflicting battle as an adult with hijab because... I'd want to wear it, but then as I'm getting closer, some idiot child will come along and be like, yeah, so you're an amazing mom, and like, oh, I love what you're doing, but, right. you know, you're just a bit out there. I'm like, what is out there? Because yeah. I'm not out here popping bottles yeah. or, like, you know, so to me, it's like I didn't want to wear hijab 
in that moment okay. like not as in entirely but I was like yeah you're giving me more reason to resist to the point where even on my like my my dating or my thingy app online where I met my husband I wrote in the bio uh I intend to wear hijab right. not quite ready save a dawah like I don't want you what to be mean? dawah yeah. means like when they try and give you like some advice mm-hmm. you know some some brothers what you'll learn don't worry soon come you'll get it don't worry <laughs> now that it's out there they're okay. gonna have like they're gonna be like oh Welcome. you know sister like you know mm-hmm. islamically you're gonna be covering and oh yeah and i was like it's unsolicited my g like, yeah. i don't need you to tell me yeah. i know i was raised yeah, i yeah, understand yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's just like but then it's it's, it's interesting because like women get it really harsh so i so again i put hijab on a pedestal so i thought i need to be this perfect muslim mm-hmm. before i wear hijab and subhanallah my sister wore hijab when she was 13 and I remember me going, girl, you're 13. Like, you sure you want to wear hijab? Yeah. Just yeah. She's like, yeah, I think I, I think I, I like it. And I was just like, Aww. okay. She's 29 now and she's not taking it off. But she's gone through her her her, her phases of hijab. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, are you sure? Mm. Are you sure? Because it's like, to me, it's like a big deal. Because you are now Muslim. Yeah. Like, you are now 100% Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People remind you you're not Muslim enough. They're going to yeah. tell you you're crappy or they're going to expect you to be this perfect person. Like all the 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 different minorities or different ethnicities, white people, whatever, they look at you and go, "Oh, this is what Muslims do." So if I'm wearing hijab and I behave in a certain manner, they're gonna be like, "Oh, this is what they do." Right. Yeah. Same way, if you're a black person and you behave in a certain way, you have a Karen going, "Oh, look what black people do." Yeah. It's like, no, that's what he does. Yeah. That's got nothing to do with his race. Yeah. But sadly, like when you are a certain way, you're automatically representing the entirety of your of your people um so for me I felt like that was a big big thing um to why I'm not ready to wear it right um and then another one which I think maybe you might resonate with or maybe Mm -hmm. you're not even there is that the industry I'm in okay yeah so it's just like so I've been doing all this podcasting I've been doing my gym journey I'm doing all this stuff and like and I have my own identity physically and I had this attachment to how I look, what I people know me as, like whether it's my hair or my shape or whatever. And it's just mm-hmm. like, I'm now gonna have to stop that. And how people look at me, how people perceive me, yeah. will people move different around me? Like, and it's just like all these things. Oh. Yeah, is it, gonna, is it gonna stop me from having opportunities with like yeah. further collaborations? People yeah. are gonna be like, oh, she's all serious now. And I'm like, mm. Yeah, I'm still the same person. No, I get you. Um, so that was another obstacle to why I was like, all right, let me just hold off a little bit longer because I've just started filming this podcast, um, and I'm like connecting with this person and this brand, and and it's just like, subhanallah, I, I, my my priorities and my vision was completely yeah. like backwards. Yeah. But at the time, it seemed like a very solid reason yeah. to cover off. Mm-hmm. Like, so you're now doing PT in the celebrities, and obviously you're getting more and more exposure online how do you feel about the concept or have you thought about that at any point of how people I might think look about at you? it yeah I do think about it because I am my brand at the end of the day um but that wouldn't it's definitely been a thought mm. I wouldn't say that definitely wouldn't stop me if anything I would feel like I want to put the hijabis on the map like do you know what I mean like imagine me no, celeb good. PT like PT no, that's celeb sick. with my hijab on yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean um the other side, obviously, I could have. I have thought like, oh, would brands like? Obviously, it wouldn't stop me wearing my hijab. But if that, I do think, oh, like, would brands not want to work with me? I'm not gonna fit the vision, or because now I'm gonna be like more modest as well. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of layers, but I definitely can understand why you were thinking that and how all those things was, I guess, giving you more pressure. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a thought. And it, it does hold a lot of weight, to be honest, making that decision and then all the things that it will. I guess it from it, I don't know, you tell me, once you had your hijab on, did you think, oh my gosh, this holds a lot less weight to how it felt beforehand, maybe? Listen, <laughs> sis, like when I put on the hijab, yeah. I was like, do I send like, because I haven't really told you, I'll tell you if you want to know my journey to why I should put it on. Mm-hmm. But the day I did put it on, I was like, I didn't tell anyone I was going to do it. I just did it, right? Yeah. And then um, I'm like, I'm going to work on Monday. 
I'm going to the gym tomorrow. What do I do? Like, do I give them a heads up? Do I write to the manager and be like, hi, dear manager, um, I'm out. Yeah. Everything's safe. Yeah. You're safe. Yeah. Salam alaikum. Yeah. Like, you know, what, what, what do I do? Like, do I give the heads up to yeah. the manager in the gym? Like, yo. Because you know, yeah. <laughs> You're anxious about it. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's a massive weight. And subhanAllah, I went into my work environment. No one flinched. Really? No one flinched. Uh, I wanted a reaction. I wanted someone yeah. to be like, someone went, oh, happy you look lovely no, today. Stop. And I was like, that's cute. Okay. Yeah. But like, all like, you look a bit different. Okay. That's about it. And it's just like, Karen, you can ask yeah. me what's happening. Yeah, what's going on exactly. Um, and then the guys at the gym and I'm like, so one guy was like, they're kind of hunky like oh, they're they just they don't know and I'm like relax man it's a journey oh, it's a journey it's yeah. a journey like don't worry about it um so yeah so that was it and it's like I think for me that like, initially like I thought it was you but like as you're getting closer to me I was like yeah it's hers it's hers yeah. because they used to see me like in a crop top yeah. with like my leggings yeah. and the, the hair out sweating and it's just like now I'm just like in a hoodie or like a hijab and it's like they don't know how to deal with it so there was a bit of a, you know, a bit of uncom- uncomfortableness about mm-hmm. it, but in a very beautiful way. Like they just want to respect yeah. the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can and imagine. I'm just like, I appreciate That's you. Cute. That's yeah. nice. And actually, like, there's there's a beautiful thing about putting on hijab that people then assert themselves in a different lane with you, and they they know where they stand with you, and they handle you with more yeah. care. Yeah. Um. And actually, my podcast started growing as soon as I put on my hijab so I actually decided made an executive decision myself and I yeah that I was going to start season three by myself and I was going to wear hijab from day with dot like initially I was like this is going to be so crazy like season one and two no hijab everything's great yeah, yeah, like yeah. then I'm coming in hijab and I was like do you know what that's fine and if I lose followers it's cool it is what if it I is. do whatever it's fine I'm going to just do it for the sake of God and run with it and actually, there was so much blessing out of it. Like, I, my my podcast... Blew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I like love that. I had gone up by, like, 20k. Yeah, I love that. Um, not overnight, but in the space of a year that I've been doing it. Like, yeah. it's done... It's, it's actually attracted so much good energy. And I'm so glad that I kind of stayed true to that. Even though I wasn't ready. Like, I told people, like, my hijab's like a pay-as-you-go system. Um, I'm taking it each day as it comes. Like, if I run out of fuel, like, yeah. don't judge me. Like, so what happened that morning? Why was you just like, boom? I'm going to wear it. Yeah. Was it just <sighs> impulsive, like, so, that moment? Because I didn't really, like, announce everything. So no one knew the timeline of me getting married. Um, okay. And because I just kept everything very quiet. I just wanted to mind my own business and just focus on my blessings and not, mm-hmm. like, as much as I'm so eager to be like, guys, this is happening. Yeah. I'm like, Heba, learn to keep yeah. things to yourself. Yeah. But it's not in my nature to. It's my nature to be like, guys, this yeah. is happening right now. Like, I'm getting married right yeah. now. <laughs> but instead, I had to do like a humble pie and, and, and learn that some pe- like sometimes just keep things private. So basically, mm-hmm. um, it was, I, I wore uh, my hijab every Ramadan normally for tarawih. So every time I go to tarawih at night, What's that? tarawih is basically every night after you break fast, you go to the masjid. Okay. And then they do like 11 rakats of prayers. Yeah. And then they cover okay. the whole of Quran yeah. when you're there. Okay. Um, I'll take you, inshallah. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> the masjid that I go to, the guy recites beautifully. But it's a very long, like two hours in the masjid. It's, 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 but it's worth it. It's how Ramadan feels like Ramadan. Without okay. it, you kind of feel like it's not really Ramadan. Because you live in a Western country, so it's very hard to feel the right. essence. Right, okay, I got you. Get. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, every every um, day after um, we break fast, I put on my hijab and I bay and I go to the masjid. And that was my routine. Before my dad passed away, we'd all walk together and meet at mm-hmm. the end and then walk back. So my sister and I continued mm-hmm. the tradition together. Mm-hmm. And then every Eid, I wear hijab to go eat prayers. And like, it's in a park and there's a fun fair. So my son comes, he wears his his thorb yeah. and it's all like popping for one day, oh. for one night only. Yeah. You get the whole shebang. And then subhanAllah, like bear in mind a week before that, I was very like vexed at, at um, the opposite sex because of how they make me feel when it comes to you're not worthy enough because you don't wear hijab. Okay. And then I put on the hijab normally, went to praise with my son. And then my son said to me, he said, mommy, are you going to wear hijab all day today? And I said, I can do. And he's like, I said, would well, you like me to? He's like, yes. He's like, you oh, look very beautiful in it. Stop. And then I said, would you like me to wear it tomorrow? Oh, yeah. And he's like, yes, please, mommy. Oh, no, stop. 
Yeah. And then I swear wow. on my life, mm. just that moment, just those words, every single thing I've just listed before yeah. up until today, like up until this conversation, meant nothing. Yeah. Everything I worried about, I didn't care about. Just seeing him like embrace me and the way he hugs me. Mm. And like, this is the kid that goes, do we have to be Muslim because I want to celebrate Christmas? No, stop. For him... <laughs> That's what he says, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's just like... And I'm yeah. just like, so for him to oh. say that to me and be so proud of it I'm like do you know what you are truly the coolness of my eyes mm. and then from that moment I kept on and my mum and I hadn't been speaking like we we're living in the same house but I wasn't speaking to her okay. <laughs> for like three days we argued over something petty so yeah. she's watching me come in and out of the house with hijab on and she's baffled because yeah. she's a woman that always says Heba can you cover your bum Heba can you can, can you stop moving too yeah. much there's too yeah, much yeah, movement yeah. happening so she's watching me and she's like And then on the fifth day, she was like, Heba, you wearing hijab? I'm like, yeah, mama. She's like, I didn't want to give you any hasad. I didn't want to give you any evil. I am so happy for you. Aww. And I'm just like, mom, but it's pay to go. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what's... Yeah, I'm yeah, freestyling yeah. Don't right put now. Don't pressure on me right Because I, like, yeah. I didn't plan it. My son said something. Something unlocked in my heart, in my soul. And I was just like... That's crazy. Cool, here we are. Everyone assumes I wore it for a man. Everyone assumes I put it on because of my husband. And subhanAllah, I put on my hijab... Mm. And three weeks later, I met my husband. Mm. And I just thought, I, and there's this thing that I really want to wow. talk about with you, which yeah. is like, when you sacrifice something mm -hmm. for your purpose, it means so much. Like, we we kind of like are stuck in our ways. And sometimes we're like, why can't I find my blessing? Why can't I get married? Or why can't I? Da -da -da -da? And it's just like, but what have you done mm. for God to serve him? For him to be like, cool, this is for you. And subhanAllah, I put on my hijab. And God went, cool, here's your blessing. Wow. And then just like that, I met my husband. Everything fell into place. Yeah. We got married so quickly. And it's just it was just literally a, like a beautiful like wow. domino effect. Inshallah. And I'm like, I think like, and I, like upon reflection, I was like, God was waiting for me to just be selfless and to just give up something that is so important to me, which is how I look like, how people perceive me, what will be like all these what if, what ifs are so worldly and nothing to do with purpose. And the minute I gave up, he was just like, wow, cool, yeah. here we go. And I was just For like, you, yeah. okay, we are here. We're wow. good. Um, so like... Oh, it, sorry, how old was your son at the time when he asked you? He was... I've only been I've only been wearing hijab for like a year and a half. Okay. Yeah, like two years. Do you think years. he overheard... Do you think it just... Yeah. I think he just had a moment. He just looked at me. My son's a very emotionally intelligent human being. Like he's... You'll see him in a second. He's a very special you. Like, I want to jab him in the throat at times, but then there's some things about him that's so heartwarming okay. and his energy is different. So when he listens, I pay attention to him because I know, like, he does make noise sometimes. I'm like, shush. And then other times, like, there's something beautiful about the way he reflects or looks at things yeah. and deeps the world. And I'm just like, wow. for a seven-year-old, he's nine now, but for a seven-year-old, where he that's was at the time, yeah. I went like, That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And he's he's like, even when he met my husband, he was like, I said to him, How do you feel about me getting married to Uncle Ansu? He's like, Mommy, like, he makes you happy. And oh, as long as you're so, happy, I'm yeah. happy. I'm like, brother, you're seven. Yeah. You're seven. Wow. Like, relax, in it. Yeah. Relax in your wisdom. Like, be like, Yeah, as long as you buy me some cars. Yeah. Like, I want it something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But instead he would just went deep with that. Um wow. how so yeah, so basically, I mean, for me, like what's beautiful about the fact that you're feeling compelled to do it is I feel like you're also in a safe a safer and maybe generation than my generation I'm I'm much older than you um and I feel like there's so much less I think there's more acceptance of hijab now yeah. like how do you feel about that do you feel like looking around you and like certain influencers if you want to use that title Um, and faces and models that you see, there's more and more hijab. Yeah, hijabis. Definitely. Whereas in my time, that didn't exist. Yeah, no, I yeah, I definitely feel yeah what you're saying, hundred percent. Like I feel like if I went to work, I'm I'm definitely not overthinking. I know I'd be accepted around mm. my friends, around my workspace, around my family would probably be the most confused of everyone. <laughs> to yeah, be yeah. honest. Um, yeah, and, and even like the industry, whatever you call it, you can definitely see more representation over time it would also be nice to be a part of that representation um but yeah I do think what you're saying is right that's the thing I don't have the perspective back then of what it was like as well mm. or feeling those things but yeah now how I feel I definitely feel definitely like comfortable to 
yeah, to do that. What's stopping you from wearing it at the moment? What's stopping me? What's stopping me myself? I think of feeling like things have to look a certain way before I put it on my head. And that is the last thing that is part of hijab, right? Does that make sense? Like hijab is so much more than just the scarf on your head. It's yeah. about, like you're saying, how you carry yourself, mm -hmm. the words that you're speaking, what you're doing, your modesty, even like, I guess, how you're representing yourself as a Muslim as well. So... So do you feel like you put a lot of like do you like are you similar to me you put it on a pedestal to an extent where you expect to it's be like a yeah person? there needs to be a certain checklist to, like off. before I can do that is is how I feel which I know isn't good because there are some how how can I put it there's some people who wear a hijab that maybe aren't a good person or mm -hmm. have good manners or or these other things but obviously they're wearing a hijab so it's a, it's a, yeah it's a tough one so. Um, my sister kind of had a go at me when I used to say that to her. I used to be mm. like, "Oh, I can't put on hijab until da 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 da," and I have to be this person. And and a quick disclaimer for those who aren't Muslim: um, there are a lot of people who wear hijab due to cultural reasons. So, like in their culture, in their home, it's just from a young they wear hijab, and it's part of mm. who they are. So that's the first thing, actually, Islamically, that they're probably most comfortable with doing. Whereas in our, in our culture where hijab is not a very common thing that we see, no. that it seems like it's like the final obstacle. I like, get what you're saying. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so culturally, yeah, right. they might wear it, but then yeah. Islamically, they're not aligned yet. Yeah. So I think what we should need, we need to as, as human beings is understand everyone's on a journey and you will forever be perfecting yourself and you'll never reach that perfection. SubhanAllah, because there's no such thing as that, right? But to hold off doing something because you don't think you're good enough to an extent and, and that sounds like a very harsh way of saying it but to think you're not almost like worthy enough to wear it because you're you've not reached a certain level like, I've had people say I want to like convert to Islam revert to Islam but I don't feel like I'm good enough as a person mm -hmm. but it's a journey like by you putting on the hijab certain things start aligning yeah. by you putting on a hijab like it, not even forget the hijab like you sacrificing something for the sake of the purpose things will start naturally 100%. unfolding and 100%. you'll start second guessing or yeah. going but you don't expect to be this final package before you put on hijab like I get trolled daily for being told you're not really a Muslim or you don't really like you're not really a hijab because you're not covering this cool and I agree I'm not wearing hijab the way it should be but I'm grateful that I'm here than having 10 steps back yeah. so before someone criticizes someone else and if someone was to try and criticize you what you have to remember is they don't know your journey yeah. and they need to understand that you know for some for someone else just wearing this hijab like this as i'm wearing it is a massive achievement compared mm. to the lifestyle it was yeah, before facts. do you know what i mean and it's just like and, and those comments can put you off your hijab and that like, can make you feel vexed because you're just like okay so what's the point of wearing it if i'm not good enough but then they're just people who are deflecting the energy so i think you need to be like kinder on yourself and think oh, yeah definitely I don't need to be this perfect person because that's just part of your evolution as a as a woman as a Muslim or whatever like whatever it is that you're trying to do um I think it's it's we place obstacles we, we create our own um yeah. resistance and yeah. it's just like when you let go of placing it on a pedestal and go do you know what I'm gonna wear hijab I know I'm not perfect but this is gonna encourage me you're to right. continue you're right because I feel like before I put on a hijab, I was like, I'm, I can actually continue being who I want yeah. and what I am. Yeah, facts. And there's no one who's holding me accountable. But actually, when I wear hijab, I'm now being, to an extent, being accountable in a good way. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't, just because you're going to wear hijab tomorrow doesn't mean, like, you're going to wake up yeah, this morning right. and be like, I'm not going to handshake for any man, like, or any man, I'm not going to hug yeah. them. It's a journey. And I think the minute we release that pressure off ourselves and understand, like, a, God is very merciful. B, like, we're human. C, the person who's going to criticise you is going through ish themselves, but mm -hmm. you just can't see it. Yeah. So, like, don't think, you know, I'm not quite ready because I'm not this person. You'll become this person as you start. Exactly, because one of my friends was even, like, I've reached out to a lot of, um, of like, my Muslim friends, ones who do and don't wear the yeah. job, just to get advice and stuff like that. And some of them are like, babe, just just you know wear it one day and maybe not wear it the other day and I guess I'm thinking that I have to put it on and never take it off yeah, and yeah. be 
it's like I just want to be really strong and confident and be like, okay, I'm ready to do this properly, I mm-hmm. guess. And you're right, I'm putting too much pressure on it. And I've had some girls like just, you know, wear it to work one day and like slowly transition it or they'll give me like different ways I can do it. Um, yeah. And you're right, like with anything, there isn't a right way to do anything. And, and, the, the and there'll never be that moment of like, do you know when you think, oh, I know that moment that's going to happen yeah. where like you're like, I'm ready for the hijab. Like, I don't think anyone has <laughs> really had like that, that, that moment. Yeah. And I genuinely thought yeah. I'm going to have this moment where I'm so liberated in my deen and I'm going to be like, yeah, bring on a hijab. And it didn't happen like that. I was like, I had motives the next day. Like I was on the gym the night before, like again, the skin out, blah, 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 blah. Like it was, it was just a flip and it just felt right. And I thought, let me ride yeah. it out and see. And I think the less pressure you put on yourself, the more it will just become like, cool. Yeah. And it's like, that's why I said pay is your go system, right? So pay is your go system for me was like reminding myself, I'm not putting no pressure on this. I'm not going to announce it and then like start removing all my photos and like I'm not going to have this huge transition because then it's like you know when you like want to try and I know you're, you're a PC right so I can say this yeah. but you know like certain people when you want to like lose loads of weight you yeah. um you announce it and then you make a big deal of it and you go very extreme and excessive yeah. you're most likely to go the opposite right because if you go and work out seven days a week and you go on like a, a very low carb diet or whatever because you're forcing it and you're putting on a pressure like I've now declared this social media yeah, I must lose weight how does that yeah, look like yeah yeah <laughs> it spirals right so it's just like understanding yeah. that it's cool to pace yourself and 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 the funny thing is like my sister said to me she's like Heba like you covering doesn't mean that you're going to be a perfect Muslim tomorrow like stop stop putting emphasis on this stop putting emphasis that yeah you, no, this is yeah, yeah she's like you know like we're still learning we're still doing all this it's just part of your identity and that's it it's not your only identity and for her she's like me putting on the hijab and I look in the mirror it reminds me of my purpose she would that's it like it's just a little a tiny reminder for me and some people don't even like calling themselves hijabis they're like because I know I'm not good enough to be a hijabi and it's like it's because we have such harsh critics Yet the person who the, the person the being that's created us is supportive of like everything that we're doing. It's just like you know we know that you're imperfect. I know that you're gonna keep coming back and asking for forgiveness, and it's yeah. cool. Do you know what I mean? If God's very merciful, yeah. why do you give a damn about anyone yeah. else? And we're all gonna die alone. Does that make sense? Um, no, I'm I'm just like digesting, and no, it's, it's definitely helpful what you're saying it's making me think that yeah Leila why are why has it been such a thing you've created or and I know why like there's lots of different layers to it but it's how do you think your mum's gonna gonna receive it like even the first time my mum saw me pray she cried yeah like and that even caught me off guard and I was like that's why what's what's where's these tears coming from and she was happy and like she's proud by it um again though sometimes when I get ready to pray and I'm like in my hijab my abaya everything um even my annan there which means grandma she was looking at me and she was like why she she was she didn't want me to wear all black basically yeah, yeah, yeah. and she I guess it was d- weird for her or difficult mm-hmm. she's not seen me like that before it's not normal for our family so I could Im- imagine like my mum would I guess question me and just want to know it's coming from like the best places but I'm sure she'll be very proud and happy and supportive of anything I do I think that's amazing at the end of the day because I know women um who are like I actually can't wear hijab in my house like they're born Muslim like this is another like mind-blowing thing but because culturally it's culture it's so so far disconnected and so far removed yeah that if you wear hijab they'd be like don't be silly yeah and it's because they're on their own journey and their own perception of what their deen is today no 100% even like my mom because there's a lot I'm still learning right Mm. and I had nails on for ages and I was praying five times a day nails on (laughs) I had no idea and then my friend my sister she's like to me babe you know you need to take your nails off and I was like oh my gosh but as soon as I found out, I took them off straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I told my mum, she's like, Leila, isn't that a bit strong? Like, you know, and I was like, are we worried? Yeah, she, she, you know, <laughs> and it was, and I was like, mum, like, I get it. My mum doesn't understand. And I actually told my mum the other day, I was like, mum, if I had a dying wish, it would be for you to learn about Islam and practice Islam. You know, and even like, it, you know, I'm on this mission to change the world with what I'm doing. Go. Yeah. With movement, encouraging people to move more, fuel their bodies better. Mm. If I had one message it would be for people to learn islam 
I That's find amazing. on iTunes. If I got to choose one yeah, out of yeah. everything I want to do, I would tell people to learn about Islam and be curious about it and learn. And I would want everyone to be practicing it one day. I think I think it's um, firstly your your mum. She will gravitate more and more the more she sees you yeah. because because she's in awe of what you're doing and also slightly suspect like what's happening yeah. here is she going to become extremist is she going to come yeah. into the hobby one day and go yeah, yeah mother I cannot because obviously it started with the boyfriend before yeah, right? yeah, yeah, but yeah. when she saw I wasn't with him anymore and I was still she was like okay this is this is this is yeah, part of this you is part as of opposed you. to like someone's yeah trying to tap into even the you. other day I was praying in front of her she was like do you want me to turn the tv off I was like no it's okay mom don't worry and you know <laughs> I, I guess I'm just educating her yeah. the more I learn as well I've, I've learned loads of people who even like friends who have reverted to Islam mm. they've actually said like my mum's become curious about Islam just yeah. watching me move yeah how I conduct yeah, myself you know? how yeah. like I have conversations with her the way I could, like even the way I pray like they've become so curious yeah and everything that's happening around the world without saying any keywords please um it's so interesting how more and more people are just curious yeah. about our faith and I think Facts. regardless of any faith because obviously like not only Muslims are going to be watching this um I think it's just understanding your purpose and I like the one thing I wanted to start off this conversation with is figure out why you're existing beyond I'm going to be a mum one day, I'm going to be someone's wife, I'm going to be someone's husband, I'm going to be... It's just like, okay, cool, but then, like, what else am I going to be doing here? Like, and why are we doing all these things? Like, why am I wanting to be someone's wife? Why do I want to have children? What am I teaching them? What am I passing on? What is the legacy of our purpose? Yeah. And I think, rather than coasting through life and, like, figuring out day by day and planning and career, Mm -hmm. like, try and dig deeper to to you and what you stand for and what you represent not what your parents told you to represent because our parents aren't perfect and I think like bless your mum and our pe- my parents because they're so they had their own misguidance that was very factual to them and I'm actually I'm very grateful that I'm in a position to like unlearn things and relearn new things Thanks. and develop and grow yeah. and they're just very much stuck in and, their they, box. and they'll say stuff like my mom will be like oh but this is just who I am now and it's like complacency and a resistance of like this is who I am there's no point trying to change whereas I think even till we get to their age we'll still be trying to evolve 100% because yeah. it's just like we've like unlocked a new yeah, power 100%. of knowledge yeah. and it's just like it's incredible so I actually like I'm very grateful and I feel like what people need to do is like like I said, sorry, I've digressed a bit, which is call your parents raised a certain way and call this as a social norm and cultural norm. But now you live for you and you live for your future. It's like, what are you doing to serve your soul? Exactly. Your purpose and how are you going to... Because some people are like, oh yeah, once I get married, then I'll... And it's just like, but then you're assuming that this person no, is going to No, that's a really good you. point, yeah. And it's just like, I remember like, my husband and I spoke about this. He's like, yeah, I can't really get with someone. Or he's like, I, one of his red flags if you want to call it red flag, it's someone who goes, oh, I only pray once, that, like, oh, I know I'm going to pray once I get married. And it's like, but you should be wanting to pray for you yeah. first. Get that sorted, like, relationship between you and God started. Yeah, facts. And then when you go into the marriage, you then, like, yeah. you both empower each other and you elevate each other and you unlock certain new powers yeah. that didn't exist rather than no, waiting exactly. for that person or that situation to fix you. Do you know what I mean? No, that's very important. And that's practising Islam, especially... In the last few years, I have been doing it now. Purpose is the word it's brought me. A lot of pe- pu- <laughs> a lot of peace and a lot of purpose. And this is what I want for other people as well. And even my friends have become curious to Islam as well. You know, as as well as like yeah, even my clients as well because they've seen a change in me and they're curious about it. And I guess yeah. they also want that for themselves. And the way I openly speak about Islam is creating a lot of curiosity in other people which I love but yeah the purpose is definitely what it's given me and I think that's what a lot of people don't have and what I wish for a lot of people to have yeah I I, I agree with you I've watched people and I'm like what are you doing and it's just like and I even like those who are struggling like whether it's mental health or self-worth it's like when you understand your purpose those feelings you can shake off easier like when you lose sight of what your purpose if you put if you wrap your whole identity or the next husband Mm -hmm. or your children or whatever then you kind of get your world shakes when there's the situation shakes do you know what I mean whereas when you know your purpose you can like 
feel sorry, you can become a victim for a little bit, but then you know you've got to shake it off and take your lessons and blessings mm -hmm. and keep it stepping. Mm -hmm. But when you can't see there's a lesson or a blessing, and it, instead you're just like, oh, the world's against me, or yeah. da, 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 yeah. then you you kind of become, you've fallen into that trap yeah. of losing complete sight. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm very grateful because like when I lost my dad, and I'm sure like with your dad's experience as well, it's just like, you can be very frustrated at the world, mm -hmm. but then also when you understand like there's there's a reason why this happened for me. Yeah. There's a reason why I'm in this situation now and try and exactly like pick out all those small blessings and, and the lessons. Exactly. In it. And it gives you peace because all you have to do is trust trust in God and trust in, in everything that's happening and it, it gives you peace. Even when I went to Friday prayers, um, not last week, the week before the the mum was talking because I always go early to listen to the the talk before, and he was <laughs> yeah he was saying he was saying something along the lines I don't want to like mm. say his phrase exactly as it is, but he was saying like a true Muslim will always just be content in everything, in hardship, in the good things, in everything, and it's just exactly what you said mm -hmm. that purpose and understanding that we have, and what it's just given me is just peace and. I literally have nothing to say. I'm just, you know, You're I'm just, cool, yeah, easy. I'm cool. I'm easy. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, beautiful. Um, there's something beautiful, like you said, about having that contentment. Because when you have that contentment, no real situation can shake you enough. Yeah. And like, so I can, like, my husband's a perfect example of this. Whenever he's stressing, I don't see it. And I'm like, oh, no, not, no. Whenever he's in a stressful situation, I don't see it. And I'm like, so I'd be freaking out at this point. He's like, hey, but like, this is what God wants for me right now. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. He's like, literally. it doesn't make sense to us human beings yeah. why this is happening to me. But I just need to be okay with that. And he's like, so what I'm going to do, instead of being angry at God, I'm going to go to the masjid more. I'm going to read more Quran. Because maybe he's telling me, yo, I'm here. Turn to me. And the beautiful thing about God is like, even if you've like done the madness of madness, like you can keep coming back to him. He's not going to be like, oh, well, you sinned and you repented. Yeah. And therefore, I'm not going to forgive you again. It's yeah. like, keep coming back to me. Keep coming no. back to me. I'm yeah. here. And I think it's so hard when you see human beings ruining the name of faith, whether it's like because of they have their own cultural understanding and they're like, oh, you're not like as a, as a Muslim to Muslim. For someone to criticize you, it, I find it so upsetting. Yeah. I'm like you're the people who may not be like going and encouraging us yeah. or giving us positive vibes like yeah. like sis I know you're not where you're meant to be but I'm great you're having this conversation yeah. there are people saying there are 100% people who are going to say to us why are you guys even speaking about this neither of you are Muslim enough and it's just like okay. but there's so many sisters and human beings in general who feel exactly the way we feel yeah and it will resonate with them yeah do you know what it is yeah that's islam is is nothing to do with judgment though that is not islam me being a good muslim is not looking at you and judging you or pointing the finger at all and there's ways that you can say things and maybe more encouraging way or coming from a place of love as your friend or whoever looking out for you wanting better for you but yeah because like, there's, there's putting a seed in your brain when someone says something positive to you, like, oh, sis, I can see you're trying, but mm -hmm. have you considered blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm like, cool, I appreciate yeah. you got love for me for the sake of God, whatever. But when you're saying something negative, I, like, I always say, like, when I get the trolls in my comments, mm -hmm. I'm like, please note that nothing you said here is Islamic. Not a single one of your words, like, is remotely mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. None of this is halal. No. It's all haram. Like, you've, you've criticized me. You've judged me. You've cussed out my dad for example, said that my husband's this and that, made assumptions of me and then just kept it stepping. And it's just like, where is this Islamic? And then another yeah. person's going to look at it and be like, oh, so this is how Muslims roll, yeah? They're just out here bashing each other. No. And I'm like, no, he's just an idiot child yeah, no. that needs a hug from his mum. Yeah. But instead he's here. Yeah. Um, he, needs, he needs God. He, he needs God. Do you know what? It's a shame. It's a shame. Yeah, it's just a shame. I don't have anything else to say. It breaks my heart like, because... It's literally just... Because, you know, there, there's, there's some women and men as well who, like, don't think the way you and I are thinking at the moment. And when they see these comments, it pushes them away from the faith. 
they're just like, yeah, I don't mess up with faith at that here, like judging me mm-hmm. like this or being so intense or harsh or ignorant or racist. Like, yeah. There's racism as well. And it's just like, I wish, like, I just want to like go, guys, this isn't our faith. I These know. These are just stupid people. Please. No, I know. But then it comes back to our purpose and us doing this for the greater good and doing it for people in my position or in your position or, again, just to maybe open more of an open dialogue between families communities cultures 100 do you know to have these conversations and there should be spaces for this even me being open about my journey with islam like i told you i've got a lot of girls messaging me that they appreciate that i'm being open with islam and they appreciate me also being myself yeah, and yeah. showing like all parts of me because culturally they feel like they can't do that they've not been able to do that you know so it's nice to yeah your vulnerability to see it travels yeah far it's helping because people because it's allowing they don't feel alone so similar to you like what I tend to get is I resonate with what you're talking about you're I feel like you represent me or like you're I'm going through what you went through or whatever and it's just it's just so nice to unite on something even if it is somewhat negative but it's like we can grow from it together mm-hmm. you can even like look at what I'm doing and if it inspires you then sick I've, yeah. I've like my purpose is yeah. being fulfilled but do you know as well so mm. I do a free session at my local masjid uh, for the women there mm. and it actually started off with me going into the masjid and just putting on a talk mm. and just educating them about the importance of food fitness also positive self-talk mm. throughout my last almost five years of being a PT now I've seen firsthand, because I work with a lot of women, just the way people speak about themselves Mm. and that inner voice. Mm. And it just comes out in their sessions, like, well, my client's quite open with me. So I just spoke about that. And then off the back of that, I now do a free ladies only exercise session for them. Incredible. We do it at the top floor of the the masjid as well, which is beautiful. And also we have, when we finish, we talk about different things, that we have different topics. Because a lot of the women there... Um, they can only come to the session as well because it's at the masjid. A lot of them can't go to the gym or a lot of them are in marriages that aren't very good and controlling. So if you can say, okay, I'm going to go to this exercise session at the masjid, like that is a safe space for them to go to. So we have beautiful like discussions together. And even one of the ladies was like, one week, can we talk about marriages? You know, because she comes from a home where or not having people around her to have them discussions. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that we have like this safe space where we can have like... I think it's so important. Because they they, they, they need it, you know, they need these spaces. Firstly, like, well done for doing this. (laughs) Thank you. Honestly, like you're giving up your time and Mm -hmm. you're actually... Because it's fulfilling you as well. 100%. It it doesn't feel like... When I walk in there, sorry, I walk in there Saturday (laughs) morning and I'm seeing like 20 to 30 of of these sisters just there ready to go. Like they're ready to train, you know. Aunties. Yes, All all, all of them aunties. (laughs) Oldest one, 78. Youngest one, 16. Average age though, I say 40, 50. 40, 50, yeah. That's amazing. It's beautiful. That's and they're amazing. all ready to go. And it's just, yeah. Honestly, that's that's, that's it. Like, I think it's so important to connect and to create a safe space. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's that's kind of, it's like, I think you and I, the first thing we did when we, when we started DMing each other, I'm like, I want to be very purposeful. And you're like, I want to be very purposeful. I'm like, yes, we're both doing the same thing, but in different lanes. Yeah. Like, you're doing it through gymming. I'm doing it through like conversations and you're com- obviously you're having conversations as well. And it's like, if I can sit with sisters, like one of my things that I'm trying to plan at the moment is to have like every fortnight or once a month, mm-hmm. have like a bunch of sisters, whether you're Muslim or not, just, just to yeah. unpack, unload and like become human and vulnerable together. Do you know what I mean? And like, let's grow together. Let's heal together. Mm-hmm. And just to have these conversations and like having this conversation with you today, I'm so glad you didn't cancel on me because I'm just like, I really want to have this conversation. Yeah, me and too. Like, the longer no, we keep it, the more it's not going to happen. No, no, no. So I'm very grateful for you to trek all the way from your southeast. Anytime. <laughs> like the fact that you like want to have the conversation as well. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's different because for me, I have conversations with loads of different people, different um, religion, religious mm-hmm. backgrounds because I don't like growing up Brits it's just about being ethnic minorities and the fact that we have so much in common yeah. even though we come from different backgrounds yeah. different religious background beliefs yeah. but we connect over something yeah like, we've all do been you know what I mean? it, yeah exactly and trying to adjust and find our identity and to have something where I'm speaking exclusively about Islam I've never done really I've never done oh. I've only like spoken about I sat down with like Shaz Fit, I've sat with Miriam and Jasmine where we kind of spoken about how the faith has impacted mm-hmm. but it's not been an exclusive conversation yeah. of 
that. And I think even non-Muslims can take away something from this because it's not even just about um, you must convert to Islam. No, no, it's about think about your purpose and be purposeful and do yourself a service and rather than disservice by just existing. I think it breaks my heart when people just exist and they're coasting and they're just like looking forward to sleeping and avoiding yeah. and and like, oh, I've made it to Friday. Like, enjoy the weekend. Oh, crap, it's Sunday again. Mm. And it's just like, but then when you're trying to be continuously you with a motive, like a deeper serving motive, every day that's hard, it's going to be okay. And it's like, you have like a different lens to how you view life. And I think it just breaks my heart when people don't have that. So yeah, if anyone can take away anything from it, rather than saying, ah, well, one Islam, or, you know, aside from that, please. Yeah. Um, do you have any final things that you want to add in regards to the message the message the just message. off the back of what you said I would definitely encourage people to find purpose or be curious and look into more than just existing um, I'm really big and passionate about people doing what they love and I know a lot of people live through fear which is okay and a lot of people don't have an understanding of what they want to do because of how our culture is and it puts you in a box and it doesn't lead you to understanding much about yourself or your passions or what you enjoy especially if you come from quite a conforming strict like family home and I have a lot of clients a lot of my female clients feel like that with a lack of identity or understanding because they are so driven into this box and all I can encourage is for people to try and do things that they enjoy or listen to that inner voice of what is really what your insides are really telling you that you do or you don't want to do whether that's a situation you're in or whatever a job you're not happy in like whatever you want to do is possible and I just want people to be like delusional in their dreams <laughs> with it and then in terms of Islam I would say yeah just be curious and try and learn about anything obviously I would be biased to Islam but um <laughs> about anything and whether it's meditation or whether it's positive self-talk or anything that you're practicing daily that's positive and gratitude or whatever is, is going to benefit you yeah you I know? agree so um my final thing I'd say is knowledge is power um shouts to all our parents who I mean we don't choose our parents and yeah. it's it's a beautiful thing but also can be unfortunate at times um and I think just through doing the pod and having so many conversations with people some people are raised in less fortunate circumstances I think we're all kind of exposed to something that we didn't anticipate or we thought we were going through it alone as a child mm -hmm. and then as we become adults we realize oh shoot yeah, like, you had a dysfunctional family too. All right, so yeah. I thought it was just me. Yeah. Um, so we show face, right? But I think it's so important that your parents gave you this narrative. They've embedded certain foundations, but it's now your duty, your responsibility yeah. for you to now seek your own knowledge, your own understanding to life, rather than just taking what they did, take on that trauma, live with it. Yeah. Um, accept this as your truth and go well this is kind of it is what it is or I don't want to upset my mom or I don't want to upset my dad because at the end of the day you are living for you and your next generation and when you go to sleep at night it is just you and when you have to unfortunately when it's time to go yeah. you will be judged alone and it's just like us using these excuses and reasons to to, to prevent that growth is isn't enough so I feel like just genuinely seek that knowledge um, and create your own journey and create your own path and find what gives you peace and I think through that you'll feel so empowered as a person and you'll you'll be able to look at things that you're in situation friendships relationships marriages careers and go wait is this actually serving me mm -hmm. and then you start giving yourself like you said that self-love yeah more. do you know what I mean um yeah but Layla we're probably going to sit down and talk again. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we've got Do you know that. what, as well? I appreciate you, like, wanting to have this conversation with me. A lot of what you said, I'm still, like, thinking about it now, but it has genuinely, like, really helped me to not put so much pressure on, I guess, exactly what I need to be doing and looking like before I may, like, mm. put the hijab on Just my look head. At me. <laughs> no, you're amazing. I am no longer... I'm not far from perfect. I mean, does that mean you're going to wear hijab now? Yeah, I've got hijab right now. I'm, oh, joking. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Here's what we have earlier. Listen, you, I don't know. Stay tuned. Inshallah. I mean, we can do a little, we can do a little video of yeah. me trying hijab styles on you, Sian. 
can do you know what? yeah i've been watching thing. a lot of youtube videos um there's there's someone that just goes out in public and puts it on oh i saw people. that that's yeah, very beautiful is, yeah so and gonna... the way she does it i'm like oh i want to because honestly i just rap and yeah, yeah don't I worry actually, i look i look I like a fresh auntie for a very long time going to the masjid <laughs> i'm like hello yes <laughs> <laughs> like, yes but not english no yeah. <laughs> but yeah honestly thank yeah. you so much for coming and joining me in my home yeah your in... beautiful home yeah no it's been lovely and it's nice the for first podcast i've ever done is also about islam as well which is really many special. more to come guys yeah. remember me when 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 you get like stop when you blow up and shut up with blessings upon blessings mm. Just remember Mama Hair. Thank you, always. Yes. Um, so where can they find you, please? Can you plug your socials? Where can you find me? So Layla Mehmet on Instagram and on TikTok or any of the celebs I train as well. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna sh- I'm just gonna shout them out. I'm just gonna do little credits. So Mira May, that was my my first one. Hey. Snoochie Shy, Kenny All Star, Sasha, you know, like Nala's baby, Sasha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sophie Piper, and then Claire as well. Um Sarah Mehmet. I've had I've had a few people say to me that I look like Mira May. Really? <laughs> when I used to have my hair out there, yeah, I said like, like, "Oh, when was, you used to have you your hair out, that you look like." And I'm like, I can really? see it. I can see it to an extent. She's probably gonna go, "What the hell? Mm. Are you mad?" And fun fact as well, she was the client that first ever took me mustard to the mosque. Yeah, <gasps> oh, it was Mira. That's so deep. Yeah, it's really special. Oh, girl, yeah. I like it even more now. Yeah, that's where you can find me. Yes. Um, I was gonna start doing that because <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can find me. I am Fine. Hebs with a Z. <laughs> um, on on Instagram, I am Hebs. Um, and Mama Hebs on YouTube. Please subscribe, like. I want to continue being purposeful and I can't do it without your support. So everything that you guys do, I appreciate. I see you and I'm grateful for you.